This evening, we are privileged to have with us Pastor Chris Finley, who is at the Andrews University Theological Seminary, um, sponsored by the Texas Conference. And so we're happy that he's consented to share God's word and devotional thought with us this evening. And so, Pastor Finley, we welcome you and we thank you for um, your willingness to share God's word with us. Praise God. Praise God. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for Pastor Bishop and your leadership, mentorship. I appreciate you giving a young preacher an opportunity to open up the word of God. So before we go in, I'm going to ask us to pray and invite the Holy Spirit to open our minds and our hearts so that we can learn together from God's word. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the blessings that you give us. And we pray, Lord, that as we open your word, that you will transform us, Lord, through your love and through your power and continue to help us to understand how much we depend on you, how much we need you, and how grateful we are for you and for making a way through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, may you bless us, and we thank you for all that you've done and given us this chance to pray together and be together this evening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 You know, this evening... That's some reason your screen is frozen. Okay. Okay. So, this evening, one of the things that I'm super grateful for is the fact that when we look at prayer in the Bible, Paul, he says a prayer that just changes the way we look at prayer. Because in Ephesians chapter 1, he says to us in chapter 1 verse 17, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. You see, when I read that, it just grabbed me because... Paul, he came so simple, but so deep. He said, my prayer, and I'm praying, I keep praying, I keep asking that God will help you to know him better. Through what? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it brings to mind when I was in Africa, I was preaching in Zambia. And when I was preaching in Zambia, there was a night where we got to talking about the true church of God and the false church of God. And the true church of God is defined as the one that encourages God's followers, God's children to keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. And the false teachings include telling God's children, you don't need to keep the commandments of God. You don't need to have obedience to God's commands. And th that night there was a man who was walking by. He heard the preaching and he came and he actually came and he that was the first night he attended then the second night then the third night by the third night he made a decision for baptism and when he got his bible he just started to cry he got on his knees and he started to cry on the floor we were giving out bibles for everyone who was baptized and i wondered why is he crying so passionately is it because he couldn't afford a bible why is it that he was crying that way after that brother shared his testimony, he said that he was a part of a robbery team that would go and do heist and they would do luxury robberies. And one, two years ago in 2019, one of the security guards tried to fight him. And when he was trying to fight them, they end up killing him. Two of his friends went to jail. He got away. And he said, since then I've been looking for a church. I've been looking to give myself to God. I've been looking for a change of life. And when I passed by, I heard you talking about God's church and the Ten Commandments. And he started to even say things that I didn't even remember preaching about 
um, going down the Ten Commandments and listening them one by one and, and letting them know that the gospel is the fact that even if you have committed one of these crimes against God and humanity that is listed in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, that there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. And he was crying because he said that maybe all of you who came to church knew this information already. But for me, this was life, life transformational because I now know that I am forgiven in Jesus. So when Paul says that he's praying that the the, our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. He's saying that because if you think about the problem of sin, if you think about the great controversy, what it did was it caused this world to be in complete disunity. If you see the world right now today, it's about disunity. It's about self gratification it's about living for oneself and this is the nature that by nature we are we don't know how to save ourselves and how to turn to god we don't know how to unify as one we don't know how to pray for each other and look out for each other within our own knowledge wisdom and strength and see, this is what the devil wanted to do with us. The devil wants us to be in separation. He doesn't want us coming together on the prayer line. The devil doesn't want us gathering together to pray and to submit ourselves in humility, humbleness before God. He doesn't want us abiding in Christ and in abiding as a unit, as a family of God. And this is where... The Ten Commandments and the commandments of God are so significant because what God is saying is the first few commandments are for God and then the last commandments are for our brother and sister. And, and this is so significant because when we see Jesus and the cross, Jesus was all about reconciliation and bringing us back to God. And it's the same way how God is saying, I'm into unity. I'm into unity. I'm into making you right in my eyes through my son. So when Paul is praying, Paul is praying that we come to know God and that God is a God of reconciliation. God is a God of unity. He's saying, I'm praying that the spirit of wisdom and revelation that's what he's saying. He's saying, I'm praying for the spirit of wisdom. I'm praying for the spirit of revelation. Now, when he says, I'm praying for the spirit of wisdom, he's using this word, Sophia. He's using a word that means spiritual insight. I want you to have the Holy Spirit inside of you that's going to give you spiritual insight. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you to be led by the Holy Spirit so that you know how to maneuver on a day-to-day -day basis with all the different situations that you are going to come across, whether it be in your house, whether it be at the office, whether it be at church, whether it be with your neighbors, whether it be with a stranger that you will meet along the way. I'm praying that you have a spirit of wisdom. I'm praying that you start to Live your life according to the will of God and see the blessings that come to your life when you give your life fully into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm praying for the spirit of wisdom. That's what Paul prays. So when we on the prayer call and we wonder what can we pray for? Not only for ourselves, but for our brothers and sisters. We pray for a spirit of wisdom. We pray that our brothers and sisters, our family members, those that may not know God, may not have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. We pray for a spirit of wisdom so that they can come to Jesus Christ. They, they could fall on their knees and they could say, Lord, I need you and I need a relationship with you. So that's first and foremost. That's what the spirit of wisdom does for our life. 
It allows us to know how to live godly lives and to have upright living. How to live righteously through abiding in Christ. But then Paul doesn't just stop there. He doesn't just say, I want to give you the spirit of wisdom. He's saying, I'm praying that God may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And you may say, revelation? Revelation of what? Revelation of the fact that when Christ died, he died to bring us into one family, the family of God. So when we stand before Christ, when we stand before Christ, we all stand before Christ the same because in Romans 3.10, it, it explains something to us. Let's turn to Romans 3.10. And this is why it's so, inf so important, the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation shows us why we're all one family. Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They, they have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. So this is showing us that when we stand before the cross, we are all equal, needing the salvation, the grace, and the mercy of Jesus Christ. And this spirit of revelation also opens us up to Romans 5, 8, where it says, it says now, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, when, when Paul is saying, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit gives you the spirit of wisdom, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit gives you revelation, he's saying that, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit reveals to you concerning things that you didn't know before. So when he says the spirit of wisdom, he's saying that, I'm praying that you know how to have spiritual insight, but I'm also praying that this gospel that it comes alive to you. It is revealed to you in a way that you never seen before. That's what he's praying for God's people in Ephesus. That's what he's praying while he's writing from Rome in a prison cell. He's saying, I'm praying that you know how to live with a Holy Spirit filled life. And I'm praying that the gospel comes alive to your life in a way where you did not understand it before. You understood the gospel at this level. I'm praying that God will open himself up to you in a way that you will understand the gospel more and more and know how to apply the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to your life more today. I'm praying that when you wake up today, you understand that his mercy, his grace is new every morning and that this gospel Right? The fact that we get forgiveness at the cross, the, the fact that we are washed in the blood of Christ, the, the, the fact that Christ died for our sins, that it becomes real to us in a way that we didn't know before. So, because at the end of the day, when, God, when, when, when Paul is saying, I'm praying for wisdom and revelation, is because he realizes that we cannot do that on our own. That we as humans, in our own flesh, we lack unity. We're in disunity. In our own flesh, in our own selfishness, in our own sinful ways, we lack the understanding of God. And even with a knowledge of God and evil, without the Holy Spirit, we do not know how to turn to God in our own human strength. We need the Holy Spirit. We need a power working in us that will turn us back to God every single day, that will have us abide in Christ, that will have us walk with God and turn to the salvation that we find in Jesus. So this is Paul's prayer. Paul is saying, if you ever want to model prayer, if you want to know how to pray for the church, turn to Ephesians 1. It will give us a model of how we should be praying for our brothers and sisters and for our own spiritual lives. So this is where we are saying, Lord, I need you, Lord. I want to pray for, I want to pray for myself. I want to pray for my brothers and sisters. I want to pray for my community. I want to pray that God will give us new eyes. And I want to pray 
that we could know how to turn to God and realize our dependence on him. I remember when I first started to read the Bible, my scripture, the scripture that opened my eyes and helped me turn to God was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. He will direct you. So I had to learn how to stop relying on my own strength and start relying on God. When I read that for the first time, it was psh, my brain. I was remember I was sitting on my bed in Brooklyn, New York, and I was reading the Bible, reading through Proverbs. And when I first read that scripture, it was life changing for me. And this is what Paul is praying for the, the members of the church in Ephesus. He's saying that I'm praying for this Holy Spirit to work in your life. I'm praying for revelation, for God to reveal himself to you. And this is where we need to pray. We need to know that this was God working through Paul. This was God working through the Holy Spirit, inspiring Paul to say, I need you to come to know him better. I need you to come in to know him better. And if you know, if you ever come to a uh, more knowledge of Jesus Christ, the first thing you come to realize is that Jesus Christ is stretching out his hands to say, come, come receive my grace. Come receive my mercy. Come forsake your sins and be transformed by the power of the gospel. And, 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 and this is our greatest prayer that we Receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we will know him better. And, and this is where we get that heavenly spiritual insight. This is the wisdom that Paul is talking about. He's saying, no, this is not just regular wisdom. This is not earthly knowledge. This is the Holy Spirit giving you spiritual insight in your mind to know how to be transformed. That's what I'm praying over your life. I'm praying that God starts to reveal himself to you in your life and that you start to see the blessings and the hand of God over our lives. When we come to a decision that says, that says Lord, I, not my will be done, your will be done. Like how Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. I don't want to live according to my will. I don't want this decision based on my wants, my desires. Because in that point, Jesus said, let this, Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass before me. But no, he came and after he prayed, he said, Lord, not my will. May your will be done. And this is what Paul is praying for. The Holy Spirit to come into our lives in a way where we have the wisdom to know how to navigate and deal with these everyday situations, right? And then also that the hand of God will come over our lives and it will be revealed to us what it's like living in God's will so that we can come to know Jesus better. So you might say, Pastor, okay, Pastor, we get it. We're supposed to pray for wisdom in our lives. We're supposed to pray for our brothers and sisters. We're supposed to pray that God starts to work in our life, Pastor. We get it. We get it, Pastor. But what do we do with this information? What do we do with this now? What are you asking us to do? And this is what I'm asking us to do. I'm asking us now to allow ourselves to get to know Jesus Christ better through the Holy Spirit and then allow as we get to know him better we know how to serve better we know how to share we know how to come into a saving relationship with God we know how to bless others we know how to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives so that we can start to serve. We can start to take action. We can start to pray. We can start to teach people what the Holy Spirit is teaching us as we get to know Jesus Christ and have a deeper walk with Him. But now what is God calling us to do now? God is calling us right here on this prayer line tonight that we need to put our pride aside. We need to put our pride aside and we need to come to an understanding that God 
you are near to us and you're looking to pour the spirit of wisdom on us and to reveal to us things that we don't know about you as yet. How much grace you have for us. How much mercy you have for, for us. The will that you have for our lives. Not according to your our will, but according to the will of Jesus Christ. And the greatest thing that we could accomplish in this moment right now, to make it practical right now, is to get to know Jesus better. Is to come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. A deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Where we could say, Lord, work in me. Lord, work in me. And this is the appeal I want to make. I want to make an appeal tonight. And the appeal I want to make is very simple. It's a simple appeal where I'm going to be appealing to everyone to say, I want you to say, Lord, work in me. Holy Spirit, I need your understanding, Lord. I need you. I can't do this by myself. I need the Holy Spirit to come and to work in my life tonight. That's what I need. I'm coming and I'm saying, Lord, I know I can't do it by you, by myself. I know I can't do it by myself. So this is my prayer now. We're making an appeal tonight. The appeal tonight we, we are making is that Lord, I need the spirit of wisdom. I need the wisdom to move forward every day. I can't do it by myself. Lord, I need you to reveal yourself to me more and more. Reveal yourself to me on how to deal with the situations I'm going through right now. The challenges I'm going through right now. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Because this is Paul's prayer. This was Paul's prayer for the church. And this is the prayers that we need today. He said, I keep asking. So this is where I want to make the appeal. We have 20 people on our call tonight. And I want to make the appeal that one person, you put it in the chat. And you say, Lord, work in me. That's the appeal I'm making. You say, Lord, work in me. Work in me, Lord. Lord, work in me. Lord, work in me. Lord, work in me. Lord, work in me. Amen. If there's one person, just turn on your mic and say, Lord, work in me. Lord, work in me. Lord, work in me. Amen. If there's just one. Lord, work in me. 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 Amen. Bye. Lord, please work in me. I believe Paul's prayer was significant when he penned it from that prison as it is today. So much threats against the Bible, the gospel, things going in our schools. And this is where we really need wisdom as God's people. And we have to be in prayer even more. If we were praying four times a day before, we need to pray more. Because we are being tested and challenged all around us at every side. And our daily prayer must be, Lord, work in me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this prayer call. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We ask for wisdom. We ask for revelation in our lives so that we could be transformed. Jesus, we love you. Now continue to do the work, good work in us until we see you face to face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you amen. all. Thank you, Pastor Bishop. Amen. amen, Pastor. What a powerful word this evening that you shared with us. Lord, work in 
me. Lord, work in me. Lord, work in me. Thank you, Pastor Finley, for um, just bringing the word to us this evening in such a powerful way. And it resonated in our hearts, and we are grateful. And we will be praying every day, night and day, several times a day, Lord, work in me. Lord, give us the spirit of wisdom. Thank you again, Pastor. Um, we, Elder uh, Pastor Jenkins, prayed somewhat for this, but we're going to pray again. I'll ask Elder Notice to pray for our churches here in South Houston, but, but more so the pastors and their families, the teachers. And then after this, we'll get into a general intercession where you can either put your requests in the chat or you can voice them. So I'll notice if you would pray for pastors of, and families and our teachers at this time. Okay. No problem. Let us pray. Father, we pause a moment longer to say to give you the praise, to give you the thanks, to give you the glory for what you have done.